the fuel and uh, timing tables for a larger map sensor. So um, a, a guy uh, posted up asking about how to how to do this. He's got a three and a half bar uh, map sensor. So the first thing uh, I want to show you is if you click on sensor, you bring up map here. Uh, right now it's Holly three and a half bar and he's got a Holly five bar that he wants to put in the engine. So if we click this, it's going to ask us as the map sensor types change, would you like the uh, would you like the software to be automatically scaled throughout uh, for the new sensor limits? So um, the, the first problem with this is, is that it's it's going to change the the axis. OK, it's going to change it here, but it's not going to change any of these values. So the car is going to run like crap. So what we want to do is we want to hit no, and we're going to make a manual change to this. OK, so we're going to the five bar map sensor. We're assuming that you just screwed it into the car and uh, we're going to go over here to the fuel ICF and the base system fuel flow. And we're going to assume that this engine uh, this tune-up, uh, this is what I'm assuming here, has ran well already. Um, the, the guy who sent me this, um, you know, I, I'm assuming it ran well because um, he didn't make note of, uh, you know, having any problems. Um, his fuel flow numbers are pretty low, um, but it is an LS, so it's kind of expected. To, you know, it just doesn't really make a lot of power. So uh, what we want to do is we want to modify this to match better up with, uh, or, you know, match better with what our intentions are of the car. So right now, he's uh, the, the top of his scale is 36.3 uh, pounds of boost and 7,500 RPM. So he didn't say anything about uh, changing the RPM scale. So we're going to leave that alone. Uh, he just wants to be able to, you know, put more boost in the engine. So uh, what the, typically the way I do this is uh, what you'll do is you'll find a cell here, you see that we've got a lot of resolution here in vacuum, okay? So this whole area is all in vacuum and, you know, all the way across. So, well, I'm sorry, from here down is all in vacuum. Um, but this is all vacuum here. And the car runs well already, it idles nice and clean and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove a, a, a few of these cells so that we can get a couple cells back up here. Uh, I believe he said his ultimate boost was, or his ultimate goal for boost was to uh, be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 45 pounds of boost. So uh, you can see the break points here are pretty close, you know, because we're only going from, from 36 PSI down to um, uh, 14 and a half inches of vacuum. So we're going to get rid of uh, this 12.8, okay, and we're going to, uh, we're going to take this 11.1 .1 value and we're going to highlight this. Right click, hit copy, go down here, highlight this, hit paste. And now notice that we've got the same values in both of them. Okay, we're going to move this breakpoint here from minus 12.8 to minus 11.1. Uh, now, what typically when you when you change it like this, it's going to want to shift these up. Okay, so. This is why I have two versions of this global folder open. So when we hit enter, notice it just changed this to minus 10.3. Well, we want to spot check. So if we didn't remember exactly what we had, right? So we, we had 11.1 .1 here. Um, let's look here. This is minus 9.4. So let's spot check that. And if you notice, you flicker between the two of them, you can see minus 9.4 is in the same spot. So that did not move for us. So, um, so that's fine. So if we want to... Let's remove minus 9.4 out of this This uh, also. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to move minus 9.4 down to the minus 10.3 um, so we can remove another another row here. So we'll do the same thing. You know, copy and then paste. And then we're going to change this to minus 9.4. So now we freed up uh, you know, two more cells. So let's, uh, do we do we really need all this resolution here? So why don't we take this cell here, or this row here, do the same thing, copy, minus 6.0, we just did 9.4. And again, the, your breakpoints are going to be up to you. Um, and now we're going to change this to minus 6.0. 
Um, so as you see, we're starting to gain some, we're, we're gaining some space, right? So you manually do this your whole way up, okay? I'm going to skip over, you know, each individual cell because you, you understand the, I'm hoping you all understand the, uh, the, the theory, the principle behind this. So now what I typically like to do when we're talking about um, boost numbers, right, for breakpoints, if his ultimate goal here is to get up to, you know, the 45 or 50 pounds of boost, right, we're going to want 50 pounds of boost in this cell. So that cell we're going to want to change to 50 pounds of boost. And then we, we have a known good value for 36.3. Well, we're assuming a known good value, right? So we have a known good value for, uh, for 36.3 pounds of boost. So let's take this 36.3 and shove it here. Now, again, you'd be working your way up from the bottom. Okay, but now we're going to give ourselves four more breakpoints to get from 36 to 45. We probably don't even need that much. We can shove 36 here, and we have three more three more breakpoints because as back pressure on the turbo starts to go up, the fuel volume doesn't really change as much as as you'd think. You know, the volume of fuel that you need to uh, to make. The so, we'll uh, we can take this 36.3, and we're gonna we're gonna first we're gonna copy this right. So here's our row copy. We're going to pick this one right here, 31.2. We're going to right click and we're going to hit paste. And then this is going to be 36.3. Now, notice it's automatically populated the 60.9, which is the top of a five bar map sensor. If you never are going to run 60 pounds of boost to the engine, use this resolution, you know, wisely. So if the ultimate goal here is to say 50 pounds of boost, right, we can key in 50 left click here and hold just like we did with all them rows right click and then hit fill column values so now we've got a nice linear transition between 36 40 45 and 50. so and uh since we've got this is our 36 value okay so this is these are all of the values we have from 36 okay what we can do is we can take this same row of, of cells right here that we've already just took from 36 we can right click copy and I'm not telling you that this is what you should do to send this thing down the racetrack I'm telling you that this is a way to get yourself reasonably close okay um, so we right click we save it we've got four more pounds of boost or five more pounds of boost in the engine we're gonna paste it here as well all right so now notice our our fuel values are exactly the same okay so we can do this right click or left click and hold and then hit control and right arrow, and uh, the right arrow is adding 5% fuel, okay? So we can add 10% fuel to it right there, all right? His injectors are too small, but again, this thing is never going to make this much power because it's an LS. So we can then take our 40.5, and, th and again, this is just, I'd rather uh, err on the side of caution and be rich as opposed to lean, um, especially on a turbo, you know, gasoline deal. We can right-click our freshly modified row of values for the 40.9 pounds of boost and we can copy them and then let's go up to 45 here and then we can paste them and let's increase that by another five percent right so we can just again hold down control hit the right arrow key and we've now increased them so notice 1136 to 1193 now take our freshly additional five percent fuel row of uh, values, right click, copy them, and then 50 pounds of boost, right click, paste them. So now these two values, or these two rows again are the same values, so we'll highlight them, and then control, right arrow, we add another 5% fuel. So um, this is a rough, you know, a, a quick rough way to get it up, to, to expand your, uh, your map sensor. Um, with known good values, right? So all of this was based around the fact that this 36.3 pounds boost is assumed to be a good fuel values for this engine, okay? So don't go worrying about adding a, uh, a five bar map sensor if you're making 12 pounds of boost and the thing runs like crap. There's no point. You want the resolution all through here, uh, you know, so that you can, you can really dial in uh, what you're working with. Um, but again, this is all assuming that your fuel map is, is pretty damn close. So now that the fuel map is done, right, uh, we've got, we stopped at 36 um, pounds of boost in the timing table as well. 
So, oh, this is atrocious. Um, so this is all. This is uh, this is what he sent me. So, if this is what you're happy with and this is how you want it to work, uh, what you'll do is you can you can click right here and hit uh, copy fuel axis. But if you do that, it's going to change this right here, but it's not going to change any of the values. So typically what I like to do is I open up that other one, okay? Go to Spark right here. That way we can spot check what we've got. So repeat and do the exact same thing of what you had before. You see what I'm saying? So now these are the same, but we're going to go into the one that we've already modified our fuel map. Hit copy fuel axis, now our axis has changed. So now we're going up to 50 pounds of boost, but we've got 15 degrees of timing at 50 pounds of boost up here, okay? So if you look, we're, we're bouncing back and forth between the two. So that third from top cell, if you notice, it's uh, in, in this one, it's 29.5 pounds of boost. And in this one, it's 30 pounds of boost. So you, this is a good spot to uh, to kind of judge based off of this is this is where we had uh, timing at you know before in the old map, and this is where we have timing at also in the uh, in the new map. All of these numbers are what we had up to 36 pounds of boost. So we can highlight them and we can control and we can down arrow, which is one percent, a couple times, or we can right arrow and that's five percent. But um, that's how you modify your your uh, your timing and fuel tables for a map sensor change. So hopefully that answered uh, everybody's questions. Um, the guy who sent this to me uh, asked he wanted me to do it for him. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send him the link to this video and then I'm going to make him do it himself. So um, that's because Austin doesn't listen in class because I showed him how to do this already. So. Hopefully that answers your questions. Have a good one.